game stop. Hello, hello, and welcome to SDVOE Live. I'm your host, Justin Kennington, and this is TV for Pro AV. We have a very important show for you today. Uh, we're going to cover a topic that is important to Pro AV, important to the, the future of, of consumer video electronics, uh, but also a little bit confusing in the world of Pro AV, uh, and that is High Dynamic Range Imaging, HDR. Uh, we're going to cover that with our special guest, Stefan Tremblay uh, from Semtech Aptovision, uh, one of the creators of the technology that drives SDVOE uh, and a real expert in HDMI uh, and all kinds of video systems. So he's going to have uh, a lot to share with us uh, about that. Uh, watch throughout the show as we have a couple of quiz questions coming at you in some of the breaks. Uh, those of you who are able to successfully answer those quiz questions, either in the chat window down below me uh, or on Twitter at hashtag SDVOE Live, uh, anybody who answers both questions correctly will be entered uh, to win a prize. Uh, before we move on, uh, I want to pause for a minute uh, and reflect on someone very important uh, that the Pro AV industry lost a week ago. Uh, someone important to Pro AV, but also important to me personally. Uh, and that was Fred Bargetzi, the CTO. Uh, of Crestron. He is the reason that I moved into the Pro AV industry from outside of it. Uh, he taught me uh, that with the right team with you, uh, all you have to do is set very big goals and commit yourself uh, and you can achieve almost anything. Uh, for that reason, I would say he's the reason uh, that you're seeing this show today uh, because of what, what he taught me. Uh, I remember a, a particular incident. I was in his office uh, complaining about some task that he, he needed me to do and I thought it wasn't going to be possible and I couldn't do it and blah blah woe is me and Fred just said just 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 stop Sh just go do magic and, and you know what I don't remember what it was but I left his office and and I figured it out and I made it happen uh, and it was his way of uh, inspiring people uh, to believe that they could do things that they didn't know they could do uh, that I think stood out the most. Not to mention just what a nice person he was. You meet so few truly successful people that are also just really nice. Uh, and, and so I'm really sorry to miss him. Uh, I think his family's asking for donations uh, to ccals.org. So if you're so inclined, uh, check that out. I'd like to dedicate today's show to Fred's memory and, and, and say one last thanks to him for everything he taught me. With that, uh, and speaking of teaching things, uh, I'm going to take a break now and hand it off to my co-host, Matt Dodd, who you'll see in a few seconds in our classroom, uh, and he's going to teach you about the basics uh, of high dynamic range HDR. Uh, we'll see Matt in a minute. Hello again, everybody. Matt here, Matt Dodd. Uh, great to have you back. Hope you had a lovely uh, Christmas and uh, a New Year break. Uh, Happy New Year, as they say over there in the, in the US and Canada. Um, all right, <laughs> that's what they say over here in, in the UK. It's, uh, it's, it's a cold, nutty uh, evening here in, in the UK. Um, yeah, it's just cold and damp, but hey, uh, the sun's always shining uh, in the SDVOE building. I think I've just given away the fact that we're not in the same building, but I think you've probably gathered that by now. So let's, uh, let's press on. What is HDR? It's, 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 as with everything in education, it's really important that we don't assume anything. We can't do that. So what we're going to do, first of all, is just go through the basics of HDR, take a look at this, and then we can move that forward and, and introduce Stéphane Tremblay. So enjoy. HDR, or High Dynamic Range, has been used extensively in the world of photography for years. And over the last 10 years, HDR has been introduced to video content to give us a far deeper image quality and definition, especially noticeable on larger panels which have become today's norm. This course will explain HDR technology and give you clarity on exactly how it improves the quality of an image. Put simply, 
HDR improves the quality of an image by creating whiter whites and darker blacks, while making millions more colours appear on the screen. By increasing the contrast and brightness capabilities of a display, we're able to make a far wider range of colours and colour shades available. In other words, by increasing brightness and contrast levels, we're able to display deeper and more vibrant shades of blue, green and red across the screen, because the range from dark to light is far higher in a display that can support HDR. In the Colour Space and Colour Depth course, we introduced you to the chromaticity chart to explain the differences between Rec 601 or standard definition, Rec 709 or high definition, and Rec 2020 or ultra high definition. You can revisit that course by clicking here in the top right. We're going to use the same chromaticity chart to help us explain HDR because while it's not a direct component of HDR, WCG or wide colour gamut, describes the amount of colours which can be shown at any one time on a display. And once you understand this, you'll have more clarity on the benefits of HDR. The brightness of a display is measured in nits, and when the technical wizards of yesterday went to work making HDR as effective as possible, the standard definition technology available forced video content to be produced to meet the requirements of the typical CRT TVs available using the Rec 709 colour gamut and brightness of around 100 nits. Contrast this to the human eye, which can perceive up to 10,000 nits of brightness. With SDR's limitations, content creators had to carefully choose how to squeeze a realistic image into the 100 nits of brightness available. It's no wonder you've never confused a TV screen with reality. HDR has dramatically changed this because content is being produced using a colour gamut and a peak brightness which is more similar to the capabilities of the human eye. However, not all HDR displays and formats are created equally. So, content may include wider colour gamut and higher peak brightness than the display's capabilities. Metadata is the term used for embedded information about the content which helps a lower brightness display understand how to successfully display a high peak brightness image. The world of video has become a lot more complicated. If the metadata wasn't present, then the display wouldn't know how to correctly show the HDR content it's receiving. For example, a media container used for HDR can carry more saturated colours than can be shown on most wide colour gamut displays. Therefore, the media container is larger than the display's native colour gamut, and that content needs to be precisely mapped to the capabilities of the display. HDR itself is managed in a number of different ways. HDR10, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. Now, these all work in similar ways by increasing the contrast and colours. However, they do behave differently. HDR10 is a popular and simple HDR format developed by the Consumer Technology Association. The HDR10 standard sends static metadata to the display enabling the display to calibrate its picture based on overall characteristics of the video stream. HDR10 aims to produce around a thousand nits of peak brightness. HDR10 Plus was developed by Samsung and Amazon. And HDR10 Plus works differently to HDR10 by sending dynamic metadata, allowing TVs to calibrate the best possible picture frame by frame. This makes the picture look more realistic and the format supports brightness values up to 4000 nits. HDR10 and HDR10 Plus both send their metadata from source to display 
using data passing mechanisms in the HDMI standard called AV info frames. And it's these two formats which are commonly used by film production companies, video game manufacturers and TV show production companies. Finally, Dolby Vision is a proprietary HDR standard introduced by Dolby Laboratories. Like HDR10+, Dolby Vision also sends dynamic metadata to the TV and further supports 12-bit colour depth, which is 4096 shades of each primary colour. Dolby Vision aims at reproducing 10,000 nits of peak brightness far more than that which is offered by its counterpart HDR standards, suggesting that TVs with Dolby Vision can produce 10 times the amount of light than HDR10, although there are currently very few displays that can actually support a 10,000 nit brightness value. Dolby Vision passes its metadata by encoding and hiding the metadata inside the image itself. In HDR10, HDR10+, and standard Dolby Vision, the data transmitted from the source to the display is identical, regardless of the display. And it's the display using metadata which adjusts the image to suit itself. The latest iteration of Dolby Vision is called Low Latency Mode. And in this mode, the source reads out the detailed HDR capabilities of the display via EDID and then passes a customised signal built specifically for that display. The same source would pass different signals when connected to different displays. Because the TV is receiving a customised signal already, there's no need for metadata in Dolby Vision low latency mode, so none is passed. So, the next time you see the phrase HDR compatible, you'll be able to appreciate just how much work goes into making your display provide you with images which aim to meet the high peak brightness demands of your eyes. The idea of a source customising its data for a specific display brings up specific challenges for video distribution systems. And we'll learn more about that in our next HDR instalment. Hello, 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 you again. Another great segment, Matt. Thank you for, for breaking down HDR in, in such a simple way that uh, I hope will help people out there uh, understand the flavors a little bit better. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, as I said, to, to, as I opened it up with, it's important that we don't assume, you know, HDR is a, is, is a well-known uh, three-letter acronym in itself, but it, it's one of those things that people, has it got HDR? Yeah, well, that's important. Yeah, but what, what does that mean? And, I, and throughout the course of, to, the, the, of today's show, we're going to help you to, to, to add those parts to that, to that explanation, certainly to your customers, because it's, it's really important. You know, the, the with HDR versus the without HDR difference is night and day. And uh, this show is all about helping you guys to, to really start piecing those bits of the puzzle together. It can get very complex. Um, so, you know, we're, we're here to, to walk you through that. And, uh, and I think Steph's going to be extremely... Uh, uh, powerful in helping and get that message across. Today's a bit of a sad, oh, was... lovely dedication to Fred, by the way, Justin. Lovely dedication. Thank nice you. Nice one. Thank you. Um, also a sad day because the, the windscreen wiper uh, uh, blade and the whole windscreen wiper mechanism on my five just completely fell apart. Uh, and I, and I, I was a bit disappointed. It, it rains a lot in the UK. So it rains an awful sense, lot right? and it happened mid travel. So I don't know if you've ever been in your uh -oh. car and your window wiper just stops working when it's throwing it down with rain. And it's typically the driver's side that's, that's broken. So yeah, that, that, was, uh, that was quite scary. Um, bit of a thrill, bit of a thrill, but... Um, we, shall, we, shall we bring our guest? Who is our guest? Tell us who, who's this guy? Who is he? I mean, uh, tell us who he that is. is uh, that is... That is Stefan Tremblay, uh, CTO of Aptivision Products for, for Semtech, uh, one of the steering members of the SDVOE Alliance. Uh, Stefan was 
really the the inventor of the technology that became SDVoE. Uh, so so if we want to have a, a person on the show able to talk about moving high resolution video data over Ethernet networks, uh, there's there's really no one better qualified. I've known Steph for for ten years now since since Aptovision first started trying to sell their products to me, and then eventually I, I joined. Uh, Stefan's team and, and helped to found this alliance. Uh, so Steph has been there from the very beginning of video over IP uh, and no better um, guest to talk about the bits and bytes of HDR. I'm just going to see if he's ready. Uh, two seconds. Um, tell him a joke or something, JK. Uh, Steph, are, are you ready? Have you yet, uh, is yet, time to leave the green room now. It's all good. We've got you. Uh, take care. Just mind that step. Lovely. Yeah, I think, I think he's ready. So shall we bring him in? Shall we bring him in, viewers? Steph, Click the button. let's bring you in. There he is. No, he's not there. Not there yet. Hold on. There he is. There hey. we go. Yeah. Hello, Steph. Hey, Steph. Hi, Matt. I'm How are Justin. You? How are you? Oh, we're very well. Good, Thank good. you very well. How are you? Perfect. Perfect. In fact, I would have loved to be invited in your studio, but uh, despite that, weather is okay here. Well, listen, it takes, it, yeah, you, you, there's a few more hoops to go through before you get to be in the SDVOE house, Steph. Well, so, uh, travel restrictions, you understand. We, of course, yeah. our studio is in an undisclosed, safe location. Uh, I'm willing to now disclose it is not in Canada, uh, oh. thus, thus preventing <laughs> Stefan from being able to join us live. Maybe next that, time. <laughs> that narrows it down a little bit. It's funny, Steph, when I said, how are you? And you said, perfect. It reminded me of when David Letterman was, uh, was interviewing Peter O'Toole. Uh, for those of you guys who you know, Peter was an amazing actor, Lawrence of Olivier. And uh, when David Letterman said, how are you? And Peter O'Toole said, interesting. <laughs> Lovely. So, um, Steph, we're here to talk about HDR. You notice, JK, that I very quickly segue straight into something more important after my jokes. Let's, let's, because they're, let's they're not that. working very well. Uh, we Steph, segue we're, here into something. <laughs> we're here to talk about HDR. And, and one of the first things I want to throw at you is... Um, you know, why, why does HDR matter in Pro-AV? Let, let's, let's start channeling that, that, uh, that into Pro-AV. Why, why does it matter in the Pro-AV Pro space? Uh, it matters to get quality. Um, years ago, uh, those uh, TV vendors, uh, including uh, organizations like the IRT and EBU, they had to figure out, okay, how to improve TVs, right? How to get better image. Is it by going higher resolution, higher frame rate, wider color range, HDR, high dynamic range? And the answer is simply put, HDR, right? This is uh, the way to get uh, deeper color, blacker blacks, whiter whites. And this is what they have done. And to me, I'll be honest with you, uh, I've been going to trade shows since close to 20 years now. And this is the most impressive thing. The first time I saw a real HDR display with real HDR content is stunning. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was the same story for me. I remember seeing it in, in some private Technicolor backroom suite. and. And they showed it to me on this hot rotted flat panel display that they'd you know built custom to do HDR for the first time, and I was mm. like, "Wow, there's mm. this is special. Mm. It's it's so different than than just increasing resolution." So mm. why why is that, Steph? Why is why is changing the quality of the pixels so much more important today than just increasing resolution on its own, which is the path we've been on for for decades, I guess. Um, well, first, uh, simply put, there's a diminishing return. So I was looking at the numbers for 8K, for example. If you want to appreciate an 8K display, you have to get a horizontal viewing of 100 degree. That means from the angle you describe by looking at the screen from left to right has to be 100 degree. So in my I living room, my neck that far. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even have 30 degrees. So yeah, adding more pixel, if you're really close to the screen, you might see a difference. But other than that, you need better pixels and not more. Okay. And um, Matt, I think mentioned in the, in the education piece, the human eye, right? yeah. being able to perceive yeah. 10,000 nits instead of the 100 the TV was putting out. I'm that's, not entirely convinced that's that a my human gap. eye can get 10,000 nits, I have to say. Yeah, 
but I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll take. Sometimes I feel like I work with ten thousand nits. <laughs> That's harsh. <laughs> well, the the that's about the HDR, right? It's uh, increasing the brightness. It's the main thing. And seriously, the real HDR standard for that is Dolby Vision that hangs at ten thousand nits. So everything under the hood is capable of doing ten thousand nits, but most of the content today is mastered at 4,000 nits, right? They, they don't pass that 4,000 nits for many reasons. One of them is no display today can do 10,000 nits. You, you, you touched on something that I, I wanted to jump to next perfectly, which is you know Dolby Vision aiming for 10,000 nits. Um, is, so as a result, is Dolby winning that standards battle? And, and what's the latest from them? Are they, are they doing new things, or is that standard staying where it is? What's going on with, with Dolby Vision? Uh, well, Dolby Vision is by far the best standard for HDR. Just to put things in perspective, uh, they are from the get-go, 10,000 nits ready, 12-bit, whereas HDR10 and HDR10 Plus are only 10 bits. Uh, they are uh, dynamic metadata. Uh, so it's it's really the more advanced standard. In fact, the, all the demos I've seen uh, make it the better standard. So that's um, number one. Yeah, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry, Matt. sorry. It's, no, just just to press pause there a second, guys. Um, Twelve bit, ten bit, eight bit. There's there's tons of content here in Academy. So after the after this show, you can head in and start to you know really remind yourselves or learn about you know these different bit rates. It's it's important, and, and, and they're all explained. Sorry, Stefan, carry on. Yeah, and I, I was about to say uh, Dolby Vision, uh, they have lots of traction. Uh, most of the TV vendors, despite it being a paying standard, right? HDR10 and HDR10 Plus are free to use, but a TV vendor trying to do Dolby Vision will have to pay a royalty to Dolby. But in returns, Dolby makes sure uh, with, let's say, Sony, that their TV is capable of rendering properly. Speaking of which, Dolby Vision uh, is uh, aiming at PQ as a transfer characteristic function for uh, the electrons to the light. And it's, it's really a referral base. In other words, uh, let's say I put a 709 code, then it means 100 nits. So that's the only standard with that type of fidelity. Okay, so look, are guys, gonna, are we going to subtitle this in, in English now? Or <laughs> yeah, just, we'll, we'll, we'll try. In we'll try. So um, what we're going to do here is uh, we, we, the next course that we that we talked about the the, the next course on Academy. Uh, let's just take a sneak preview at that course because this really goes into detail of everything that Steph's saying. Let's take a look at that right now. SDVOE technology fully supports LLDV, and over the past two years. All appliances claiming support for Dolby Vision are also supporting it. Furthermore, SDVOE is able to accommodate older displays which are not even 4K by using advanced processing to scale the original image and display it in the correct format. In this example, we see just that, a 1080p TV which needs to subscribe to the LLDV stream. By using the SDVOE fast switching mode, the image can be shown, and while it's never going to match the quality of the original source, once again, it's perfectly viewable. Compared to standard Dolby Vision, there's no more finicky data packing of metadata within the active picture pixel data, making LLDV much friendlier to distribute. Even a non-Dolby Vision capable TV receiving an LLDV signal will correctly display that LLDV signal. In the case of standard Dolby Vision, image corruption was the result we were previously plagued by. Latency is another huge improvement of LLDV and AV synchronization between different TVs is now possible.
he, you have to stop him after a while because he, he he just he turns into this this machine. Yes. <laughs> yes. You can only, we can um, yeah. When, when, sorry, go on. I was going to say it's worth touching on for people that that term LLDV. We can we can hit it a little more in the after show. Yes, we uh, can. That's low latency Dolby Vision. Yeah. Uh, but a plug here for the for the course that we've recently put up. I think last week, Matt. Uh, uh, implications yeah. of HDR in Pro AV. Yeah. Right. The course you saw here today was walking you through the basics of HDR. But now, what does it mean yeah. when it's time to distribute this beyond you know one source to one display uh, sure. in a simple home system? To, sure. to the large scale of Pro AV and AV over IP. Absolutely. It takes so it so to check that, out that course to, to get yeah. the background. You must. It takes it to the next step. Absolutely. Um, uh, listen, we've, we've, we threw two questions up at these guys. Uh, these are the questions that we threw up at everybody. Uh, we've got some, uh, we've got, stick around people, by the way, stick around for the after show because that's a really good opportunity for you to get stuck in with us. We'll have Steph with us. Um, and you know we're here to take your questions and, and pose them to Steph, whatever they are. So I think we're going to probably get a lot of that uh, today. Um, but these are the questions we threw up. This, these are the these are the prize-winning questions. Uh, what units are used to, to measure brightness, uh, J.K.? I hope I hope we have people getting these today. We ha we have a nasty habit I've noticed, Matt, of putting up really difficult questions and then not even answering them in the show. Uh, really? But this time I think we pretty clearly answered both of these. Well, I, think I think it's fine, but I think we have. I think this is an easy week. That's all I'm saying. Uh, well, we talked a lot about nits today, we and did. nits are the units of brightness that we use uh, to describe it, a video signal or or any image. If you ever want anybody to to really just like uh, uh, explain your weaknesses, this is your man. Hey, I write the questions. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not on you. I've written every question, every episode. It's your Guys, show. This isn't you. Oh, I'm, I'm out. Just, I'll see you later. Exactly. I'm gone. <laughs> I'm saying if you want critique, I'll give it to you, Matt. That wasn't it. That's all. For, the, for those of you that were, were in two shows ago, episode two, that's exactly what he did. He just walked off and left me there. Go on, JK. What's the answer to the second question? Which HDR format supports the highest brightness? We sound like, honestly, we sound like Dolby shills here this week. We're not. Uh, we just like their technology, and, and it supports 10,000 nits of brightness. The others don't. Uh, so Dolby Vision uh, is the correct answer to question number two. Do we have any any correct answers on your on your iPad there? We do, and I'm going to keep people on the hook. You need to stick around for the after show. You're going to get lots and lots of mentions. Oh, well loads done. and loads of people here. So uh, we, you know, we're well coming done. to the end of the show piece itself. Uh, what I want to do is just remind people of the, the hashtag, SDVOE Live. Um, just write anything, really anything you want. Just tell us what your shopping list was last week. We don't really care. Just to start using this hashtag SDVOE Live. Don't start using it. Continue using it. It's, it's a great forum for us to take comments, feedback throughout, not just the show, but, but continually. We're growing. This show is growing. You guys are making this. So thank you so much. Episode four, and, and, you know, we, we're really getting into the swing of things. So keep the comments coming. We love them. Um, JK, what's happening on the next show? Uh, two weeks from right now, you're going to see Chris Chinook, president of the 8K Association, uh, come and tell us why we do need more pixels. Uh, frankly, I think they're both right. We need more pixels and we need better pixels. Uh, and we're going to see how those fit together in, in a show about 8K uh, and how that fits in the world of Pro AV and, and HDMI. Is he as clever uh, as Stick around for the... Uh, uh, he's clever in a different way. You'll see. Ooh. You'll see. Okay. You're going to like Chris. You really will. Um, stick around for the after show, which is very easy to do. All you have to do is stay right where you're sitting and don't touch anything. We'll be back with you with Steph for your questions live after the credits. Brilliant. Say Let's bye, go man. get changed, JK. We'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye. Thank you again.